Governor, thanks for being on the show tonight. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be on your show. Got a question for you about tax reform. We don't know what the bill's going to look like. I suspect you might have some insight. However, when you define tax reform, can you just lower rates and get rid of the deductions and call it reform, or do we need to see something structural like the end of a, of a tax structure? Uh, I think tax reform would include three major objectives. One is to be competitive with our neighboring states, especially with regards to income tax and corporate tax, which is are impacting our recruitment more than anything else. Uh, the second is to reward productivity as opposed to punishing productivity. And the third is to close some loopholes, some that Democrats put in and some Republicans put in even in the past uh, two years that uh, I think are unfair and uh, need to be closed uh, for fairness and to ensure that we get the proper revenue into the state. More consumption-based taxes. I think consumption is more of an argument. That I'm more of a consumption-based advocate as opposed to punishing productivity and income. Because when you, product, uh, when you punish productivity and income, uh, the people will move. They'll become less productive. And we're trying to have just the opposite economic environment in North Carolina. We'll rapid fire questions. Medicaid is a lot changing, a lot of audits coming out about Medicaid, cost overruns, time overruns. It's not been a good picture if you believe Beth Wood. It's not just Beth Wood, it's uh, the governor and, uh, and also Aldona Voss, the secretary, who has uh, been saying it since day one and it's even worse than we can imagine and we anticipate more bad news and more cost overruns of Medicaid uh, due to some uh, very bad formulas and very bad management during the past uh, two to three years. Bad formulas and bad management, is that the system? Is that the system that, that, that the government has created slowly over years? It's a or combination. It, it people? It's, it's a combination of systems, bad management, uh, bad operations, bad IS systems, um, it's all broken and it all has to be fixed because the Medicaid cost overruns are really impacting our ability to have enough education money, to have enough transportation money, to have enough maintenance money of even basic buildings here in Raleigh and across the state. That's the biggest financial detriment to North Carolina right now is the Medicaid cost overruns and the second may well be mental health which uh, we're just now working on. Voter ID passed the House. We'll see what happens in the Senate. The key word, strict photo, key phrase, strict photo ID. How do you feel about strict photo ID as part of a comprehensive package? Well, I think photo ID will be a, definitely a part of the package. I think strict is uh, um, it's actually less strict than, than was being talked about a year ago. I mean, allowing a student ID allowing a driver's license, allowing uh, a co a corporate IDs, company IDs. I don't think are strict. I think it's common sense. We're just verifying that the people on the, on the ballot, on, on the voter registration card, is the person who's actually voting. It's to protect the integrity of the voting system in North Carolina. I'm watching uh, the school debate, gun control versus school security. I've seen other states, other governors go for the gun control route. Here I've not heard much about gun control. But I have seen you start the center with Kieran Shanahan, right. uh, not to mention the Brian Holloway bill, which would be what guards, counselors, and panic buttons. Right. We'll see how that bill turns out. What happened in North Carolina that the gun control advocates never got the traction? It doesn't appear that they got in other states. I, I don't know. I, listen, I, I've really tried to concentrate on the economy, the efficiency of government, and education. And that's where I'm focusing. I'm trying to tell you the truth. I'm trying to get off the liberal and the conservative uh, social issues and concentrate on the things that people are worried about most, and that's the economy. But I do care about school safety, and that's why we've set up this wonderful program where we're having eight community-wide meetings across the state to find out how best we can protect our young kids when they come into our schools. And until I get that report, I think it would be foolish for me and or the legislature to uh, introduce uh, new legislation. School reform and school funding, do you see that as an, of course it's an economic issue, but do you see it as one of those core issues or, we, or do you dabble into social experimentation when you talk about changing our public schools and how they run and well, how they we need to, we need to change our whole education system and uh, you know I've put together I, I, the education cabinet that had their first meeting in three years. The governor actually met with the head of the university system, head of the uh, two-year college system, the superintendent of schools, and the head of the private college system, and the head of pre-K. First time in three years. And I've given them clear objectives as chairman. We're going to set up a vision and a brand for North Carolina education. 
we're going to start sharing resources. We're going to start sharing budgets. And we're going to put technology in our schools and share that technology. Those are just some basic things that we haven't been doing. We've had silos in education in North Carolina. Good people, some great schools, but we haven't been working together in an efficient and effective way, especially in which we're thinking about results. My goal is to get kids jobs once they graduate and make sure they have the talents and the knowledge to get jobs in North Carolina. And right now there's a disconnect. We have the third highest unemployment rate in the country, and yet we have employers who say they can't find qualified um, applicants. That's a disconnect between education and commerce that we have to bring together. You can bring these state leaders together. You're the boss. Yeah. But down at that local level, how much trust are you putting in to local school boards that if you do reform and if you give them flexibility, they're going to do the right thing and not hunker down? Well, this is where I'm actually a conservative. I think the government closest to the people is the government that's going to be more effective. And uh, I've talked to principals, I've talked to school superintendents, and each, you know, you talk to a superintendent in the mountains versus down the East Coast versus in Charlotte or Greensboro, they have different challenges and, and uh, different uh, uh, diversity of uh, students. And they should be given some flexibility and not be ruled completely out of Raleigh. I like being given flexibility, but I also will demand results before we give them money. Economic development, there's a lot of policy here and a lot of folks just don't understand it. They do understand incentives. Um, MetLife came, they're getting a nice package, yeah. but they're bringing jobs down here. These companies coming in, are they generally bringing new jobs in or are they or just relocating the workers they got from New Jersey? How does, that, how does that work and how do you envision it working? Well, it's a sad commentary. Um, frankly, a lot of businesses that are growing in our economy today, which is very stagnant, is stealing customers from someone else. And that's happening in government too. I mean, I took a little quick trip to Chicago uh, just the other night. Uh, I did it under the radar screen while Governor Perry let it be known. But, you know, I'm out there trying to get businesses from Illinois or from California or from New York to come to North Carolina. And I think it's going to be a combination of them bringing new people, which will help our uh, real estate market and our construction uh, jobs, but also growing jobs within North Carolina. So I think most jobs that companies that we're trying to recruit to North Carolina, you're probably talking about 30 percent of the people being transferred and the other part will be growing from within, which is I think a pretty good match. And Governor Pat McCrory, I appreciate you letting our team come in your office and give you an interview. It's an honor to have you here. Thank you very much.